Really pick and push. These little tears living underneath my bed. Know the real, my selection of all the mobs. That subtle breathing in the closet every single evening. Think I can never see me again. What's the big seat? When they hear the sound of the drum, they'll be saying, no, no, no.
I can enjoy knowing that we have that relationship and that they're great students. That's the main Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the night's game and also to Senior Night 2023. What a great night when we celebrate the careers of our student athletes, student artists, all those who are involved in our football program on Friday nights. We've got a great group of seniors this year, and we're going to run through their names and their escorts in just a moment. And hopefully I will not butcher too many names tonight. It's always a possibility. All right, first tonight, representing the football program, Amir Adams, escorted by Rwanda Bosby. Gabe Bell, escorted by Nan and Chris Bell. Dallas Booth, escorted by Eileen and Troy Booth. Barrett Kane, escorted by Nathan Kane, Leanne Kane, and Hunter Griffin. Camden Como, escorted by Jeff Como. Henry Conwell, escorted by Megan and Jim Conwell. Sanders Daniel, escorted by Lauren and Michael Daniel. Butler Davis, escorted by Renee Davis.
Dixon Davis, escorted by Tracy and Jay Davis. Carson Davison, escorted by April and Stephen Davison. The last of the Frazier gang, Hunter Frazier, escorted by Amber and Justin Frazier. Preston Godfrey, escorted by Patrice and Anthony Godfrey. <laughs> Elijah Gilliam, escorted by Casey and Mark, excuse me, by John Gilliam and Danielle Gilliam. Luke Cameron, escorted by Casey and Mark Cameron. <laughs> Jose Helwig, escorted by Carla and Jason Helwig. Brandon Jensen, escorted by Laurie and Bruce Jensen. <laughs> Dylan Kincaid, escorted by Tara and David Kincaid. Peter Krauss, escorted by Mary Francis Krauss and Peter Krauss. Corey Antoine Martin II, escorted by Manisha and Corey Martin. Cooper Middleton escorted by Laurie and Cree Middleton. Salvador Miranda, escorted by Renee and Joe Miranda. Pat Mitchell, escorted by Lauren and Dale Barker. Clayton Noblet, escorted by Kim and Vince Noblet. <laughs> Brad 
Brockton Norris, escorted by Mr. Miss Brock Norris. Bowers Patrick, escorted by Macy and Ira Patrick. Tucker Petrus, escorted by Angela Petrus. Nolan Phillips, escorted by Jill and Heath Phillips. Michael Pentarelli, escorted by Kim Midkin and the late Michael Adam Pentarelli. Do you remember him this evening? John Pridgen, escorted by Jennifer Shelby and Josh Pridgen. Bill Rogers, escorted by Peyton and Jody Rogers. Walker Rucks, escorted by Jamie Rucks and Robbie Rucks. Oliver Schultes, escorted by Renee and Jonathan Schultes. Nelson Chadwell, Chad Stewart, escorted by Julie and Chris Stewart Jr. Stephen Strong, escorted by Jennifer and Stephen Strong. Landon White, escorted by Rachel and Daniel White and Kenny and Edith Tex. Deshaun and Dwayne Williams, escorted by Kenya and Carrie Williams. Campbell McKellar, escorted by Holly and Bryant McKellar. And those are our senior football play players this evening. Congratulate them. Our band seniors, Stella Broderick, escorted by Heather Lawrence, Donna, and Dean Broderick. Emma Bumpers, escorted by Jill and Les Bumpers. Lanier Chu, escorted by Stacy and David Chu.
Josie Capoletta, escorted by Bob Capoletta. Brendan Cotton, escorted by Connie Colvin and Carson Cotton. Spencer E. Davis, the third, escorted by Suzanne and Spencer Davis. Kendra Doan, escorted by Angela and Mike Doan. <laughs> Zachary Dorda, escorted by Jill and Daniel Dorda. <laughs> Tucker Harrison, escorted by Brooke and Hunter Harrison. Hill, escorted by Jeanette and Will Hill. <laughs> Eagle Scout Gabriel Hunter, escorted by Joy and Scott Hunter. Normal Cantor, escorted by grandparents Joe and Belinda Absher. <laughs> Brian Matthew Caradinos, escorted by Lauren and Brian Caradinos. Ashley Mangus, escorted by Leslie and George Mangus. <laughs> Noah Sugg, escorted by Rebecca and Ashley Sugg. <laughs> Ian Sullivan, escorted by Hale and Sean Sullivan. Zane Teal, escorted by Rebecca and Joey Teal. <laughs> Joey Vinson, escorted by Fallon Vinson and Timothy Coleman. Zoe Nichols, escorted by Troy Amons, grandfather. Now our cheerleaders. Cooper Anderson, escorted by Hagen Anderson and Jeremy Anderson. Brindley Bogus, escorted by Sarah Page and Mike Bogus. Lulu Cowden, escorted by Julie and Brett Cowden. Mary Ella Dorgan, escorted by Kristen and Chris Dorgan. Madeline Grant, escorted by Jenny and Christopher Grant. Chloe Ellis, escorted by Melissa Street Ellis and Keith Ellis.
Katie Fiddler, escorted by Jody and Randy Fiddler. Peyton Grant, escorted by Jimmy and Christopher Grant. Isabel Martin, escorted by Christina and David Martin. Eva Grace Morgan, escorted by Betty Morgan and grandfather Harold Morgan. Sarah Claire Seiso, escorted by Chris and Mark Seiso. Ella Trailer, escorted by Judy and Bryant Trailer. Those are your cheerleaders. Last tonight is Katie Black, escorted by Gary Black. She's on our Pirate Nation Live technical team. I'd like to welcome, or excuse me, to congratulate all of our 2024 technically seniors and their last night here at Fairhope Municipal Stadium and Major Steel. Congratulations to all of you. Zone. Let's have a great day and go Pirates. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's busy out there. A lot of people moving around, but we would ask if you would to just pause, take a deep breath. Please stand, gentlemen, and move your hats. It's a lot to be thinking about around the world today. Hope that you will consider those people in your thoughts tonight, in your prayers, our servicemen at risk. Join us for a moment of silence, followed by our national anthem. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to WC Major Steel at Fairhope Municipal Stadium. This is the home of your Fairhope Pirates. On behalf of Fairhope Mayor Sherry Sullivan, the City Council and Recreation Department, and the Fairhope High School Principal John Cardwell, we welcome you to senior night as Fairhope High School just honored our student athletes and artists during this last game of the Pirates 2023 season. Great group of
for the visiting Lions, number seven, Josh Thompson, number four, Jack Cornish, number 23, Gray Leibles. For the Pirates, number 38, Henry Conwell, number 72, Chad Stewart, number 41, Dwayne Williams, and number 34, Gabe Bell. WC Majors uh, Stadium, uh, Fairhope Municipal Stadium, and WC Majors Field. Uh, welcome to our final broadcast of the season. I hate to say there, Scott, but uh, I'm Shannon Hayes. Uh, Scott Berry's right here with me, and we're doing our final broadcast of the year. For the football season. For the football season, there yes. Go. There you go. Got to make mention of that. Uh, it is senior night tonight. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed all the seniors. Uh, we, had, we had 36 seniors tonight. God, that was a lot. It was like I, we didn't know if we was going to get through all over right. game time. Well, it, it's 7 o'clock right now. So, yep. uh, we're, we're they did a time. good job. I, I, just to bring up the cannon that just went off, I was happened to be watching the cheerleaders, and they took off running. <laughs> I don't know if it was because they were uh, trying to – get out in front of the team or if it scared them. I would guess it had a little bit to do with both of them. But what an awesome night. The uh, weather is cooperating. Man, it's it is as gold uh, as it was the past two nights. Uh, Lord's just looking after these seniors and giving them an opportunity to, to go out with a victory tonight and, and a beautiful night uh, for football as uh, we, we always enjoy on Friday nights. It is Friday night. Last time we talked, it was Thursday. Yes. And, uh, or I did it on Thursday uh, at Foley, and I kept saying Friday night, uh, referring to Friday night lights, and they're like, it's, uh, it's Thursday night. So, uh, anyway, it's an awesome opportunity. It's a great night. And uh, Briarwood Christian coming in from Birmingham. Uh, the Lions are 5-4 uh, and four this year. Uh, they've got a playoff berth. I think they're opening uh, next week with uh, Carver Montgomery. Oh, that, that ought to be a and, uh, good time. Uh, test for those guys we uh we went up there last year and they had to commit to uh the quarterback that had gone was going to clemson and i believe he's up there now and, and uh, trying to work hard to get into that rotation up there but uh Kate went up there and put up some really really good numbers against them and i uh you know it was just exciting to watch that game yeah, that was a, that was a great game, a good victory for us. I yep. think we won 44-22. Uh, I think. Oh, what nice it was. job on the coverage oh. inside the ten yard line. They're going to give him about the. Uh, they're going to say forward progress got to the eleven, but uh, great coverage there and a good kick uh, from uh, number eighty. I think he uh, tried to come in and uh, maybe let that one hit when he should have fielded it, yeah. and, uh, and it got him in a bad position. So, uh, Briarwood starting a little uh, about the 11-yard line tonight. Yeah. So, so, defensively, we've been playing really well. I know that the last couple of games have not come out for us on top of the scoreboard, but defensively, we are, we've we been playing really well, been going to the football well, as that, that play shows there. Man, that is great, great coverage right there on our team. Uh, can't, those black jerseys always give us a hard time to find numbers. I may have to get my binoculars out, or we'll have to listen to, to Mike over there. He does. He has someone with a pair of binoculars, so we can, uh, you know, listen to him and get some numbers. But I, I feel like that might have been uh, Dixon Davis on the stop on that one. With I, I can kind of tell with his uh, unfortunate arm sling with his shoulder situation. Uh, there. So it looks like it's second and about 11. Quick pitch there. Looks like they tried to overload on this side. Uh, yep. Good good coverage on our defense. Uh, 
Brings up a, a third in. And about third. Well, it's about third and six on that one. I was going to say third and manageable, but uh, it's not manageable. Yeah, well, we hope it's not manageable anyway. <laughs> uh, they've, they've tried to get outside us, on, uh, get outside on us, those two plays. And uh, so, you know, hopefully we can maintain that containment just like we did the last time. They shift uh, kind of like we did earlier in the season. And uh, Got a little pass. Oh. He's wide open in the oh, flats. Great he, job on the – My pass. goodness, nice coverage right there. That's the way to lay a lick on that quarterback right there. Uh, they uh, – looks like they ran a defensive uh, linebacker stunt from the backside there, and he didn't really see that coming with the fake going one way and turning his back to the uh, – The receiver – the receiver was wide open. He just uh, – he was laying on his back. He yep. can't, You can't throw from your back. Yep. So – Looks like fourth and about – Six, uh, punting from right at his, at the goal line there. So, be a good time for a bad snap. Ooh, oh, that was straight job. up. Did, did they get? They got part. Of, they had to get part of that. Man, that'll, that that'll be inside the twenty-five there. Uh, it a may lot of pressure on the, the kicker there. It it may be in. Well, they're they're being very fair with that because yeah. I'm thinking that. That I agree. Was I got that a pretty one. good angle here, and it, it, it. Well, we'll take the twenty-two on on uh, the first possession and see what we can do. I, <laughs> I like, uh, I like our odds to get some points with Keller, uh, or Campbell there, uh, getting some points with his kicking abilities. Well, well, I'll just take the extra point, and we'll go ahead and get six here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, his, yeah, that'll be a point or points. So uh, Jackson, back at quarterback with uh, looks like. Tad Mitchell. Oh, nice option. pitch. Turned up. That's a nice first pickup. I like yeah. that. We picked up about four yards. I like I like the fact that we're putting pressure on the corners to see what we have, uh, what they do with pressure coming at them to be able to make tackles. You know, your cornerbacks are not always your better uh, tackles and tacklers in those. Oh, 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 oh. What's some hold on to it. Turned up. Ooh. Mm. I don't know if that was a loose ball, if he was already down. They're saying he was down. Uh, that was great, great hands. Uh, that ball was uh, up for the quarterback, and he basically just kind of tapped it to him. And then uh, Martin just grabbed it out of the air, which was very impressive. So, um, All right, brings third and about four. Now, this is manageable for us. Yes. Uh, Preston hasn't touched the ball yet, obviously, so we – we like our odds with him having the ball in his hands. There. Nope. Oh. Okay. Pitched it out again. We got lost a few yards there, so it's going to bring up about third and five, uh, sitting on about the 19-yard line. Yep. And Campbell's coming in, and that be about I a – I guess I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> well – 32-yard, 30, uh, should be a 32-yard try from here or a 35. It's well within his distance. I've seen him be, I've yeah. seen him kick 30, 40s. Good job, hold. That's gonna Balls be up. Down the middle. It is good. Good job. <laughs> Fires on the board. There's that cannon going off right on time. Yeah, we we uh, we talked earlier about the misfire a couple of weeks ago where we had a penalty uh, because it didn't go off quite at the right time. So I'm guessing Charlie has got that situated, and uh, so that's yeah, that's a unique thing for the Pirates to have. Uh, you know, you see that at college stadiums uh, with. <coughs> You know, something like that going off. But over the years, and I've been here a few, you know, uh, that's kind of been incorporated. Obviously, the ship was not there uh, when the late Joe Dean was coaching here. I don't know that that would have been something that uh, Coach Dean would have been okay with. But, uh, you know, then they put the, the cannon in there. Used to have the small cannon for extra points. And, you know, the big cannon would go off, and then they would do the little cannon, which was a shotgun shell. Uh, but they would do that. It was loud enough that you could hear the uh, extra point. Uh, cannon go off. So good job, number 80 there. Campbell doing his part on senior night. So uh, now he feels this one this time. I think he moved up a little bit just to grab that. I think that was a little back on the uh, 
on the uh, end zone yep. when he got this one. So he brought it all the way back out to the 30. And I was going to tell you something about, you know, with Charlie uh, doing the cannon, he's been doing it since they've had the cannon, Correct. I think. Uh, but he uh, packs his own gunpowder. Correct. And that's where you get the little sparks from. Yeah. He he's added a sparkly kind of guy. Yes, he is. <laughs> but uh, – he, uh, he was telling a story about his wife. You know, she says uh, the uh, ATF's going to come by and, and get on to him one day because he puts all the charges and everything out on the uh, kitchen tables when he's doing it. Yeah, you know, so. probably not the uh, <laughs> the best way for that situation to happen. Oh, ball stone out in the flag. Hold on to him. There you go. Ooh. Wait till help gets there. there Good you job. Go. We Good we job. Talked about that over the year, over the last couple of weeks is, you know, we we, we rally to the football. So that is uh, something that uh, that we're prominent for here at Fairhope is is doing your job and then maintaining the outside edge and then rallying to the football when somebody's got them either turned back or, uh, you know, as that in that situation, had a leg and just holding on until. Okay. Movement there, 71 moved a little bit. That'll back him up five yards. Yeah, well, he was holding on for dear life, waiting for help to get there, and that, that was a great job. Now, if anybody wants to shout out, let us know where you're calling in, who you're supporting. Uh, give us a call here. Our numbers are on the board. Uh, he's got Scott's or mine, so just give us a holler and let us know what's going on. Yeah, I just actually got one from uh, Coach uh, Luke Stanton. He's the bo uh, middle school football coach and the, the tennis coach for um, the high school. It looks like they – oh, they got it back. They still brings up about – Second or third and nine, yeah. third and nine. But uh, he wants to uh, talk about girls tennis, which will come up in the spring. And uh, return the girls tennis returns all, all of the top six from the 23 South section champions: Claudia Qatar, 12th grader; Paige Evans, 12th grader; Anna Calzetta, 12th grader; Skylar Spinks, 12th grade; Gia Calzetta, 10th grade. Oh, he had it in his hand. Oh, my goodness. It was, looked like a pick six. He had that thing. Uh, he anticipated. So, it's going to bring up fourth down. So, Mary Mac Rux is an 11th Look grader. Look at that. He had it in his hand. Oh, that's one of those. <laughs> well, and and I'm, this is no shame on whoever it was. I really can't tell who it was. But sometimes that's why you play defense because <laughs> you can't catch. And I played with those guys in college and, you know, tremendous athletes could run. But uh, they're, they're lined going up. for it. They go for it, and they did. I was thinking they was going to kick this thing, but all right, get the, get him right. Uh, oh, he got it, just barely. Nice play design. Uh, just kept running with it. So, uh, boys returned three of the top six from 23. Porter, Hornigold, Wright, Tapscott, and Jackson Robards are the, all three of those guys are seniors. So, looking forward to that and have a really good chance uh, with both teams, but with that many. Uh, returning players on the girl side, we, we really have a chance Ooh, to. That looks like a low stack team right there. Yep. So thanks, Coach. Up. Oh, quarterback's gonna keep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he read that one down the line. I got a uh, shout out to the little pirate cheer girls who are helping the Fairhope High School cheerleaders tonight. So you see them down there. If we can get a shot of the cheerleaders. Uh, there's probably Ooh, a lot. I'm going to say, well, I know there's 40 something cheerleaders, so there's got to be at least double that many. Uh, I think they've little got pirates. They've got the uh, the JV cheerleaders out there also yes. helping out. And, oh, there's a flag, flag somewhere in there. Might have been a hold. <laughs> it's either a face mask or a hold in that area, I would say. I want to say hold because I think. Uh, 71's already having a nay, a game. He's already had a legal procedure, and I think he may have been holding. I don't know. Maybe on us. Looks like it is. Face mask. Yep. I was say, I saw it all the way down here, and I and they looked back. I thought it was him. <laughs> 71 is a rather large young man. Yes, you can't um, miss him out there. Uh, let's see. Do we have a statistic on him, though? Just the fact that he's uh, a big guy. Luke Schultz. Uh, offensive lineman there, but he is 
I would say he's at least 6'4", 6'5", maybe even taller than that, and uh, probably 290. See how well he moves. But uh, shout out to those little pirate cheerleaders. There is uh, quite a few of them out there. Woo! We'll get a shot of them here in just a minute if uh, we can get Dez's opportunity. If we can get a shot of those uh, little cute pirate little cheerleaders. cheerleaders, little pirate cheerleaders. So it looks like second and about two after the penalty. So um, four base pitch the ball they, out. They like to try to. Oh, hit him! Ooh, that one hurt. <laughs> Feel that one. The yeah. ball got yeah. spun around and got tattooed. You know, it, it, that's basically I'm, – I'm a little bit older than you are. But, uh, you know, back in the day we would turn and pitch that and they would be right behind the quarterback. Now they've changed that play to just be able to – he's four yards closer to the line and we just – they just pitch it out there and he creates his momentum quicker. You know, it was a downhill thing back in the day, but now they're um, – hey. Ball, ball, ball. Ball, ball. I think we got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's a heck of a job by that. <laughs> Woo! He was moving and somebody somebody raked came, it. Yeah, just came from the side. You can see the replay Here it is there. right there. Um, he um, he I mean, just came from the side and he didn't have it quite uh, strong enough in that left arm and uh, grabbed him. And Woo! That was nice. And then it comes all the way back up to the tw 20. Uh, to the 20 because it's a touchback. Nice. Uh, he was he was roaming down that field. He yeah, was wide he, open. That was a good play call. Uh, just you know, unfortunate for them, but fortunate for us. But like we were talking about earlier, you know, bend and don't break type of uh, of defense there with with everybody doing their job in that situation. There goes There's Preston. Preston gets his first touch tonight. Preston Godfrey on the carry. You got a couple yards out of that. Yep. Tough well, yards. As we talk about with uh, Coach Coach Joel, uh, super, super brainiac when it comes to football plays. I see him, I walked by him yesterday, and he's out there drawing plays and watching uh, various uh, circumstances with, uh, you know, other teams, uh, higher level teams, and, uh, you know, just being able to look at a play and then diagnose it and be able to put it in a situation where our guys – are capable of running that, but he's setting up something. We talked about that, I believe, last time we were together. There's always a play after the play. So he's setting up the defense to think, well, if I see this motion or if I see this action with the quarterback, then we're going to key on that. He has something in his book of uh, plays that will play off of that particular action, and then we'll have something down the field, hopefully. Well, he's been putting the back in – back in motion come around he's been doing a lot of pitching right and then that one he come back and and hand it off to Preston Well, it's good to have the opportunity to watch high school football uh, at this uh, opportunity with our live streaming and, and uh, the ability to watch all over our, the country, uh, even in the world. Last year we had people that were in other parts of the world that were, um, oh. That was the intercepted. Just hold on to him. Well, Scott, this is what I look at. Uh, it was intercepted, and it's our, you know, we threw an interception. But when you're calling football games, hey, Miss Mayor, how are you? Uh, Mayor Sherry Sullivan just stopped by. Uh, we are in Fairhope, and uh, this is our live stream, right? right. And so uh, some people – you know, if we sound impartial, that's because we are. Uh, we're not. Uh, we don't belong. We belong to Pirate Nation. This is our booster club, and this is our team that we. 
So yes, support. Yeah, we support our team, and uh, and we and we do. You know, we shout out to the other teams, but if it sounds like we're a little impartial and we're rooting for our team, yes, we are. Yeah. And and that's so. <laughs> But we'll, we'll do our best to uh, talk good about the other team. We're not uh, homers to the point that we can't see athletic ability for what it's worth and, and be able to talk in that. So you got – that was a, a unique play. Uh, looked like they snapped it to the uh, – Did they get in? design on that play. Uh, we were talking about uh, number 71. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Oh. oh, he's wide open. He's one man. Go, 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 go. Come on, Preston. Yes, Touchdown, Pirates. No flags. That was a great kickoff. Hey, they score, we score. Look at the, uh, we got a green, green tonight from the cannon. <laughs> uh, that's happened a couple times over the years, so that's pretty awesome. But Luke Schultz, and, uh, he's 6'7", 275, and we highly recruited. We can uh, definitely tell uh, that he is a special young man. Uh, he, he's very, very large presence out there. And, uh, moves his feet really well. Uh, but he's got an offer, says here, from uh, Marshall for the last two years. So he may be, uh, is that the Thundering Herd? I, I think I think Marshall is the Thundering Herd. So good, congratulations. Now, there was an Alabama person that, uh, back in the day that was uh, named Roger Schultz. I don't know if they're. Uh, I, I, I remember Roger Schultz. In, uh, to that, but, you know, <laughs> That'd be about his size, yeah, too. They, uh, but congratulations to Luke and. Uh, hopefully he will uh, have a great opportunity uh, in the future. But what a great run by Preston to uh, get get to the end zone with um, with the great because he had a one on one with the kicker there and he made the inside cut and then he popped back outside and basically just used that speed that he has uh, to, to get to the end zone. And uh, the one guy had a. Uh, a little bit of an angle on him, so. Uh, so, Campbell does his job again, as uh, he's done all year. Uh, appreciate kickers. We've had some good ones <laughs> over the last year, you know, several years. We've had, uh, you know, Luke Freer, his Air Force, uh, the Falcons are undefeated. Uh, and he's getting some hunting uh, responsibilities and a little bit of kickoff responsibilities down okay, up there. So uh, I got a, I got a thumbs up from him today. He's doing really well. So uh, Luke Freer there with uh, Air Force Academy is, is uh, getting his, he's getting some playing time. I've been keeping up with. I need to give a shout out to uh, Caleb K 
Keller, number two on the lines. Uh, family is watching from Huntsville. So we have three minutes, 23 seconds with um, Pirates up 10, 10 to seven uh, in, the, in the first quarter. So uh, maybe it's gonna be a score fest. Whoever has it last has the opportunity to, to win on an exciting, uh, exciting play that will help them move on into the playoffs and then help us go out uh, with uh, a little momentum yeah, and, uh, going into next year. Yeah, we have uh, a big class of seniors, but uh, you know we're always building for the next year. And we you know, had, had a pretty tough year with wins and losses. We've had some really, really good games. Uh, we just you know didn't come out on top. Our last three, especially with Daffy and Foley in the mix with that. So, Oh, nice play. Uh, that's, uh, he got around the block. Had a good setup out there, but uh, takes me a little bit to be able to see those black numbers. That's uh, I guess that's uh, Leighton Duggar or no, I'm sorry, Walker. Uh, that may be uh, Blake, Blake Western, uh, or no, Walt, uh, Walker's a receiver, so it's Blake. Hand off of the middle. Little no gain on that one. Also, like to uh, shout out to uh, Marley's parents is watching from West Palm Beach, Florida. She is a a great asset to the team. She takes care of all the injuries and um, and she does. She takes care of all the sports teams here at, 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 at Fair. But she's just so personable. The kids love her. Uh, they they you know. Can I go see Miss Marley? I'm like, look, dude, you got homework to do. You, she'll be all right. Uh, so. But they dressed up uh, for Halloween the other night and came to the uh, Pirate Madness uh, for basketball and just uh, you know, had a, had a Fumble. Big, big time with that. Um, we go. Well, we'll see if they got a few positive yards out of it. It's going to bring up fourth down. Hey, I'd like to let everybody know, uh, if you're not here tonight and you want to go out and eat some dinner, uh, Elmex, one of our official sponsors here at Pirate Nation Live, uh, they were always streaming the game every Friday night. And uh, go up there tonight, uh, get some good Mexican food, uh, some drinks, uh, tea, margaritas, whatever you'd like. But they're always streaming the game. So good place to go watch the game. I don't know how he got out of that one. Uh, Gained about eight yards on that one. Good and pick up. No one Phillips, up. Phillips, Phillips is, uh, you know, one of our uh, tremendous it's athletes here on campus. Eight. Plays fo so football, baseball, and uh, still trying to decide what he's going to do after high school. But he's a super young man. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Hello, Brian coach. How you doing today? Uh, with that opportunity. So, um, you know, all right, so we got first down at about the 48. Uh, pretty good field position so far for us um, with, with those opportunities. Um, ooh, tough snap, lag. Quick shout out to the cross country team. The uh, Cross country team competed this week, and uh, the girls finished second in uh, the sectionals here in town, or uh, in in the county, and uh, the boys finished fourth. So they will both be have an opportunity to go to the state meet. Uh, either I believe it's next week, but I, I'd have to double check on that. But uh, Lane Watson finished first overall. Uh, he's a commit to Troy. So huh. he's going to go run track uh, at Troy. And then also Ian Brown, who finished 13th, and he's in my class and just a tremendous young man. And he's just a sophomore, so he's got a lot of a lot of upside coming with him. The girls, Maria Ruff, who I believe is an eighth grader, finished seventh. A.B. Conyers was eighth. L.G. Anderson, who's in my class, uh, has she finished 10th. Shea Fagan, 11th, and Josie. Little, uh, little screen pass. Kemper was 15th. Oh. 
He's trying to throw a screen out there. He got a few yards out. It's still going to bring up about third and 11. Uh, we're still in our territory, have not moved in yet. Pirates are quickly setting up. So we're playing uh, Briarwood, Christian, out of out of the uh, – oh, ooh. got a little pressure in his face there and was falling backwards. He was trying uh, to run a little slant across, yeah, the, across uh, the middle, let him back up, go underneath the linebackers. Screen, uh, but uh, two of my favorite brothers that ever played for me, TJ and Darius Jackson, just hard-nosed, just like their mama. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I got a text from dad and uh, – I know they got most of their athletic ability from their mom, but we'll give some credit to their dad. But super, <laughs> super, super family, and uh, good to hear from you guys. So it's fourth down. Nolan's punting for us. He's had a pretty good year not to have been a punter before. Ooh, stop, stop. stop oh, stop. what a punt. What an awesome so Hold on, hold on. Don't go in the end zone. Man, they stopped That's that That's awesome on at the two-yard line. Great Ooh. job. Great coverage. Nolan has gotten better at that. I, I was like, ooh, in the spring game, I was like, we, we can't find anybody that can. Uh, but he has really come on. He's Like I said earlier, he's super, super athlete. And uh, time on the clock is uh, – well, it's, it's, we just go into the second quarter, so it'll be 12 minutes uh, starting here. So uh, maybe we can get us a uh, commercial here. You get the chance to make a difference uh, to that, not only to that patient in terms of providing them the care that they need, but also the family, helping them understand what's going on and um, have some reassurance that the, that the patient's getting good care. And we all have something good to bring to the table to take the best care of our patients that we can. It just feels like family. It feels like we're taking care of family while we're here. Fairhope in general is has grown a lot and I feel like Thomas Hospital is the cornerstone for our community. We're able, you know, to form those relationships with families and spend time with them, um, which is really special um, that I feel here. Not only does our community give to us, we give back to our community. We want to be able to provide the care that they are looking for right here in Baldwin County. All right, you know, Thomas Hospital is a great opportunity for us uh, here in, in Fairhope, and we, we're just excited for what they do for us. So you got first down uh, at the two. Uh, we jump off sides, uh, just a little bit anxious there. I got a uh, text from uh, one of the uh, fans from Briarwood, and they were saying uh, one of their st uh, student athletes had a season-ending uh, injury towards ACL, so – uh, just want to shout out to him and hopefully he has a, a, a great recovery uh, with that and gets back on the playing field, whatever that may be for him. Uh, hopefully he's not a senior and, and, and uh, but you know, so they're doing a lot of movement, uh, Briarwood is to see if they can right the middle. That's just kind of a court quarterback sneak. Oh, Dixon playing a little cat and mouse game there. Got pushed from behind. Their offensive line, uh, Briarwoods, they're they're pretty pretty stout. I mean, they those uniforms don't do justice as to how big they probably really are. Uh, they kind of look like Notre Dame out there. Uh, <laughs> or Georgia Tech. Uh, got them gold helmets on. Yeah. He just slays and denies it, yeah. isn't he? he they're, they're not handling that ball <coughs> uh, as well as you would hope. Now, I'm, I'm getting a ton of texts. I uh, am I'm, too. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with them, but, uh, you know, I'll try to bump back here, back and forth. But, uh, you know. And somebody was wondering which one is which. Uh, I'm Shannon. 
and uh and then sky's got the gray hat on and i've got the blue hat on so if uh if somebody was wondering about that and also uh i think uh mr schultz he's uh committed to mercer 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 bears oh well that's uh somebody corrected on here i got you well good for him that was a good pickup there it looks like they got the first down yep uh, there move the chains seem to be a grinder i've only uh you know they they got those big horses that offensive line and just pushing people around. If he's if he's six seven, they got a couple of them. It's uh, there's there's a couple of them. It's probably well, about six 90, four. Ninety. I don't. I, I guess he's a tight end. He's uh he's got to be six five. <laughs> Number nine's probably six three two eighty. Here's a here's a go pirates go Jackson Robinson from Uncle Jim and Aunt Darlene Robinson from Baymanette pulling for the pirate. Uh, Uncle Jim. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I took your accounting class back in the 80s, so uh, if you don't remember me, uh, I'm uh, Chubby Hayes' son. That's a good defensive play. Looked like we had a stunt or a, 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 an opportunity to uh, slice between the uh, offensive lineman there and, and guessed or knew something was coming from that side, so uh, good job by the Pirates in that situation. Got Brock Norris uh, coming in at defensive end. Uh, today was senior day, and the moms did a little bit of a dance at ha or during the pep rally, and uh, Brockton and his mom did a really good job of uh, entertaining the crowd today. That, that was a lot of fun. If all the moms were out there, that, that was a lot, a lot of moms out yeah. there. We have a lot of seniors on this team. Yep. There's another quarterback oh, nice keeper. Nice job coming up there by – he got hit pretty good. Yeah, that, he got that's up. Looked like Nolan coming in and doing his job there. Uh, Amir, I uh, talked to him in the hall today, and he, uh, he, you know, just just a super young man, young man number one for the Pirates, and plays on both sides of the ball for us. But he's, he was talking about his opportunity to go to to North Alabama and play for them. They're going to move him to a, almost kind of like a linebacker, uh, uh, yeah. the nickelback type deal so he's pretty excited about that they want him to you know to come down and, and do some uh, heavy hitting in that situation so ooh, nice job That's good containment about, there yep and uh he had, going to the football so. he was looking for the trips he had trips over here on this side but it was well covered so he took off went that way and he's very elusive i mean he's he's pretty quick over there but we was able to contain I got another shout out for uh, Caleb Keller, uh, number two. Uh, somebody's watching from Highlands Ranch, Ooh, Colorado. Just missed him. Missed that. <laughs> All Anyway, right. just deal with it now. But uh, we're getting close to that that punt. Um, but uh, you know, pretty decent field position. The ball will be inside the the 35 with uh, eight minutes left in the second quarter. Score 10 to 10 to seven. Uh, Pirates are winning at this time, but. Uh, you know, back to some of the sports. Uh, which I talked to Coach Watkins today. He's the uh, indoor track coach. And uh, so they're starting up on the 13th. They have practice. And uh, so that will be an exciting opportunity for those guys that enjoy running. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the field events. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, there's that stretch play again. And they – they're oh, he pressed and got away from it. Oh, face mask. Oh, and a fumble. Lions playing, they got it, but let's see what's going on. Yep, there's uh, number 62 for the Pirates coming up with that one, so good job for him paying attention. That's um, Stephen Long. So there goes a mirror into the game, number one. Going to play a little receiver probably. Um All right, we got second and long. Looks like about 14. Got movement. Going to back us up a little bit more. Yeah, Barrett uh, got a little anxious. He wanted to whoop up on somebody on the other side. Uh, Barrett's been a uh, uh, a stalwart for the last couple of years for the Pirates uh, in, in doing uh, yeoman's work with that offensive line. If it uh, <laughs> just, just – 
turns that motor on when he steps in between those white lines and becomes a, a, a totally different person because when he's walking down the hall, he's jovial and enjoying, uh, you know. Now, which one is that one? That's uh, Barrett Kane, number 52. So, <laughs> there he goes. He's wide open. Get up the field. Nice job. That's a great throw and catch. He stepped through the ball. Uh, wasn't kind of falling backwards that time. So, good job for Jackson stepping through and uh, making a great uh, completion to uh, one of our better athletes and, and getting that first down. Coach Coleman, who helps me run the fishing team, is uh, saying what a great hat that I have on. We just got these uh, <laughs> these fishing team hats. Oh, uh, there goes – there's Sanders. Sanders Daniel, the commit that's going to Harvard. Uh, good to see him involved in the offense early uh, in that situation. But Coach Coleman is uh, the senior sponsor, uh, teaches engineering, a uh, super young man. His dad taught at Fairhope for years. I coached with him years ago. His mom's a teacher. His brother's a teacher. And and one of them, uh, got, he got smart, and he's a, a physician's assistant. So Caleb, the youngest, is uh, he got out of the education aspect. But super family. Danny just uh, always doing for other people, and, well, you, and Cody's you, the same way. You know, so. uh, Danny's dad – was my coach at Robert Stell. Yeah, I was thinking you might have a connection <laughs> with that group. Yeah, but, uh, Ed, Ed Comer. He was he was my football coach. Yeah, uh, two well, of my years I was there. Yeah. So um, so went backwards on that. So it was second down and about ten and a half or eleven. So um, motion by Tad again. Pitch. We we definitely see something that. Ooh. They, ooh, they wrapped him up pretty good right there. Yep. They yep. read that. Jackson looked like he had a good read. He kept the ball, but uh, yeah. they strung it out, uh, made a good play. He went to turn the corner. There's four of them yeah, sitting they, over they're, there. They're pretty quick. Uh, you know, their defensive line's not uh, quite as big as – well, there's number 90. He plays defense and offense, but uh, they're not quite as thick as the offensive line, but they're quick and get to the football. Those linebackers are, are pretty tough. You know, it looks like they're playing a 4-4 defense there so uh, read that screen yep I mean they're, there's like four or five of them around the yeah, ball so they are very well disciplined on uh, you know their reads and keys to be able to you know find out what the play is going on so it looks like fourth and about 13 uh, in that situation so um, and we got about five minutes left uh, yep. before halftime so half's going by quick. Uh, notice the uh, ball game is uh, we've got a 10-7. to 7. Uh, So we're up. Here comes the punt. Nice punt again. Good pass. Let's see if it rolls. Rolls the other way. All right, picked it up inside the 20. That's, you know, as, as, a, as a punter, anytime you can get the ball inside the 20, you've done your job. Uh, and he's done that twice tonight. So. Real, uh, real quick, back to the uh, indoor track. Coach Watkins was Watkins was telling me about uh, you know Lane and Ben. Ben will be doing the pentathlon, which is five uh, events: uh, long jump, triple jump, uh, pole vault, high jump, and shot put. So he uh, he will compete in that, and I think that's what he's going to do at South. Ben Knapp is going to be a oh, track. Great. Uh, co he's committed to South Alabama as one of theirs. And you talking about an athlete, that joker, he was in my class last year, and he does some some unbelievable stuff there with his abilities. So he – and super young man. As, as, uh, most of our students at our school are super – Young, win, young men and young women, which I'm sure at Briarwood they have that same opportunity uh, to talk well about their students. Unfortunately, I don't know any of them, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure somebody could sit up here and talk well about their uh, student athletes as well. But, uh, you know, they have to travel to Birmingham to compete in indoor sports. So you practice as well as you can. If you're not familiar with that, then it's, it's an uh, – Oh, look at here. Oh, he was – Great job it was well covered. At first, he was 17. wide open. That's, uh, I think, is that Mason? No, Dixon Davis there. He, yep, Dixon doing his job, maintaining. Number, number two, number two was wide. He was he was wide open, and Dixon uh, just covered him up, yeah. read the play, because 
Uh, that was a surprise because they'd been pitching it all well, night. And I'm sure that the official saw it better than I did, but I thought that was, you know, pretty straight out as far as uh, the pitch. It didn't look all the way, you know, a lateral per se, but uh, ooh, had him. <laughs> he's a slippery one. Yep. He's, he's going to run it. Got the first down there. He got tackled yeah, for a first down. A quick, uh, <laughs> I mean, you got, you got to keep your eyes open. You can't let him, right. I mean, because you still got receivers downfield. So he's. Number seven is Josh Thompson. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know their A or grade. So uh, I'm not sure if he's a youngster or a, an older upperclassman. But. Uh, so that's, that's a good play. You got a three minutes and 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Uh, and the lines are moving the football. So He just slips and ducks and moves. Yep. He, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive. He got quick feet. I don't know if he plays other sports. Uh, he looks kind of like he might be a shortstop or a second baseman <laughs> with those, those good feet. But uh, – Kudos to him. That that I could throw it a long way and I could take a hit, but I could not move my feet like that. Uh, if I could have, I'd have been another Doug Flute, maybe a little bit taller. Well, you was a long snapper, wasn't you? Well, I played quarterback in high school and junior college. Okay. And uh, I don't know how you go from quarterback to long snapper, but hey, anything to get you get you playing yeah, time, right? Well, I uh, I had. Planned on going to Millsaps and playing quarterback and, and being a pitcher and on the baseball team. And my coach comes, the junior college coach says, hey, I need you to come see me. And I say, oh, Lord, what have I done? <laughs> and uh, so he calls me in his office and says, hey, I need you to go see Coach Felker at Mississippi State. And I was like, sir? He said, uh, yeah, you need to go up there and talk to him. You know, you might be able to play up there. And I just kind of started laughing. I said, Coach, I can't play quarterback at Mississippi State. He said, I won't say what he said, but uh, – he said, you, you knucklehead, I know you can't play quarterback there, but you can go there and be the long snapper because I'd been the long snapper for two years and the quarterback. So, uh, ended up good job maintaining. Uh, anyway, I went up there and uh, walked on and snapped every snap for two years at Mississippi State, made academic all SEC, and uh, – if I'd have been a little bit bigger, I might have had an opportunity. So, uh, Well, where'd, now where'd you go up, to junior college at? Uh if you've ever watched the show No Chance or uh, Last Chance You, I played for uh, the East Mississippi Community College now, Lions. But that was the Last Chance You with Buddy Stevens where the players get one more chance uh, That in Scuba, Mississippi. That's where I was fortunate enough to play. There comes a mirror on a – Oh, right. Uh, oh, that's a nice, nice pass. Yes, it was. Did a good job on that. A little bit behind him. That was a great catch on the replay here. Uh, he has to go back behind his head and catch this football. That's a great window throw, a little bit behind. That, that's a nice throw and catch there by those guys. Uh, he stepped. Oh! <laughs> As we said, he is a slippery son of a gun. He's got to get out of bounds. Yep. Uh, got one minute, 32 seconds there. Um, with uh, – that'll be – out of bounds. Second down and about five and a half. We got a shout out to Katie and Michael for helping the Pirate Nation Live crew for the last four years. And uh, also a thank you to Mr. Desmond for his dedication. And that comes from Mama Cat, uh, if, if you're listening there. Uh, Mr. Desmond, but yeah, they do a great job. Uh, they've they've hung in there and, and put up with our shenanigans and of course Desmond's shenanigans as well. And but he takes good care of those. We're gonna miss those people. We hope they've done a good job of preparing the next generation of filmers for Pirate Nation Live because it is a dedication. So we got a timeout with a minute 27 in the second quarter. Uh, got a commercial coming up, so uh, we'll be. Right
You can't schedule an illness or injury. That's why AlphaCare Urgent Care is open late every day. The care you need when you need it. Locations in Spanish Ford and Fairhope. AlphaCare Urgent Care. Changing the way health care is delivered on the coast. What makes Thomas Hospital special? Our team. Our team makes us so special. We have great physicians, great staff, and great volunteers. We serve a lot of needs. We impact a lot of people. Uh, Baldwin County is the county everybody wants to live. Thomas, Thomas Hospital, you know, we, we talk about, they, they do a lot of good, and uh, you know, it's nice to have that opportunity right close. So number seven on the pitch option, uh, oh Lord, uh, there he goes. Number eight, who had the long run earlier, uh, just went right up the middle on the, the uh, pitch, and they did a good job of opening up that hole, that big offensive line, and he's he's pretty quick now. I uh, will say that. So, uh, dang, that, that one hurt a little bit. Going to put the lines up 13 to 10 with an opportunity for the extra point with old lefty kicker there, number 99. Uh Strong it's way. up. It's good. Yep. The uh, and uh, Josh Thompson, the quarterback at Briarwood, is a senior this year. The quarterback? Yeah, he okay. is a senior. All right. Um, I was trying to. The, I believe we're talking about uh, the young man that has. Uh, he's a junior that had the knee surgery uh, that we were talking about earlier. Number two, I believe he is. Uh, He's a junior, so he's hoping to get back on the field next year for for Briarwood. So, well, they, everybody keeps keeps uh, shouting out to him. <laughs> yeah, he, he must be a a really uh, special young man. So, congratulations to him for the the love that's coming in. So, one minute, sixteen seconds. Briarwood takes the lead, fourteen to ten. Um, so, maybe we can uh, give Preston another opportunity here to. Uh, to move us into some good field position and give us a chance right before halftime. Yeah, we need it with a minute and 16. Let's see. So, That's a good kick. Up oh, the flag. Happened. Was Must there an offside? Offsides. So I went in this. Uh, concession stand earlier and uh, the, it looked like the softball team was uh, taking care of the concession stand tonight so we appreciate what they're doing there for our uh, booster club opportunity we, sh we share those responsibilities throughout the year uh, all the ath all the uh, sports take a half to be able to run the concession stand and then throughout the year the booster club does a really good job of helping whatever uh, sport that is to be able to go to the playoffs or have a, a, a bus ride that is. Turn it up. Ooh, he got to stop. I hate to tell you that the uh, softball team, I think they're reloading for this year. Yeah. Cause they, they look strong. Uh, they had a lot of, lot of uh, young ladies come back. So I, I think they're going to be a little bit stronger. Yeah. Uh, well, I know that a couple of them have had some injuries uh, that will uh, hurt, uh, but, you know they're they're gonna they're gonna coach Powell does a good job and they're gonna be able to to rise to the occasion uh, for that situation. But uh, all right, we got a minute six seconds. Uh, we just don't want to do anything that will put us in them having the ball back. We want to maintain possession. If we get points, that's fine. But we don't want to go down uh, another situation. And you know if we get a breakaway with one of those, but we. Hopefully we're going to be a little conservative here and uh, not try to do something that's kind of out of our wheelhouse. Looks like they're going to try to run the ball, just go ahead and run yeah. that clock out before halftime. Uh, I, you know, that that was a great play by them, but, you know, we've played pretty well. Uh, we don't want to put ourselves in a hole and be able to have to come back after halftime and be down two scores. Yes. So um, Jackson's managed the, one, the game except for that one pick you know, uh, pretty well, so. Uh, 
Oh, he's got nowhere to go. Just hold on to the football. Stay in That's bounds. Right. I think we're going to go ahead and let that clock run out. So we're going to go into halftime. Uh, uh, we're going to be down 14-10. Uh, it's, it's manageable. Uh, we've played a good game. They've played a good game. A uh, couple, you know, couple plays here and there has, has put us down in the hole. Uh, but going into halftime, I think, Coach, you know, we got to make some adjustments. I would say he's going to be happy with, with where we are. I mean, yeah. if, we don't, if we don't give up the interception down there uh, and they get really, really good field position, then we – we're in a better situation, and and they'll talk about that and make some adjustments. And as we always do, they'll they'll play hard the second half, senior night, and uh, make that happen for us. We have a special guest. This he's going to do a commercial. Yeah, and then commercial we're going to have a we'll special come guest come back. Our special special guest. guest. What makes Thomas Hospital special? Our team. Our team makes us so special. We have great physicians great staff and great volunteers. We serve a lot of needs. We impact a lot of people. Uh, Baldwin County is the county everybody wants to live in. People, when they talk about Thomas, they talk about the experience. They talk about how well we interact with the families. And I just think it's a wonderful place to be. Over the years, I've come back to Thomas Hospital because it feels like a family. Thomas Hospital is a family-friendly environment who cares for you all the way from the time you're born all the way to the end of your life. My favorite thing about working here at Thomas Hospital is the underlying attitude of the staff where there is an understanding that we're all kind of looking out after each other. So we have a special guest, uh, Mayor Sherry Sullivan, who uh, we won't say she runs the city, but she has a lot to do with what uh, great opportunities we have here in the, the city of Fairhope. And, and, you know, from the flowers to recreation and, and all the things that come along with that, we appreciate what you do, making everything smooth throughout the city. Ha ha. Yeah, thank <laughs> uh, you. I, I know that, uh, you know, you deal with a lot every day with, you know, employees i have no idea how many those are but uh you know it's a big undertaking and we want to talk a little bit of, about recreation as i'm on the rec board and, and we've got so many awesome things coming for the city but i'll just kind of shut up and, and allow you to talk a little bit uh, about where we're headed uh with the city rec and other things uh, like the fire truck, which is going to be really cool. Yeah, thanks, Coach Barry. Um, recreation, there's a lot happening, as you know, because you serve on the rec board. Um, but the biggest thing is, I think, the track, which will come online in December. And that is, um, you know, a track, something that we haven't had for the um, for the track team here at Fairhope. Also, there's going to be discus throw. There will be jumps. So it's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a full-service track. So something we're looking forward to, something we're looking forward to dedicating. Um, really appreciate the partnership we have with Fairhope Single Tax and Fairhope High School in making that possible. Yeah, the, I've been out there a couple of times, and it's, it's going to be an awesome event opportunity for a lot of different reasons. You, you have the, the field events that are spread out that you'll be able to go and watch. Uh, you know, from one area of the, the facility to another and not be crammed into one location in that situation. And then you'll be able to watch the running events and, and eventually we'll have some stadium seating out there, I believe is what we've talked about. Uh, but the field on the inside will also be a highly competitive opportunity for uh, anywhere from middle school, football, uh, soccer, even lacrosse uh, down the road possibly. But, uh, you know, that's, a, that's an all-inclusive facility not to mention that uh people will be able to go and walk throughout the day uh for exercise so that's that's a great opportunity for the city of fairhope uh we've had this opportunity here and you kind of see the the track on the the pictures up there but uh it's not uh up to standards for a high school meet these days so it's it's going to be a great opportunity we talked about lane watson and ben knapp earlier and their opportunity to go and, and participate in college as a track athlete, and that will just, you know, blossom with what we'll have over there. Right. Um, we're really looking forward to being able to bring that online and, again, offer yet another recreational opportunity, not only for the citizens to be able to use the track, but for our athletes to be able to use it as well. Yeah. Uh, on the board up here, we have the picture of the new uh, fire truck that's coming, and I, I apologize for not knowing where it's going or what station it's going to. Right. 
but uh, to have the pirate flag on it's going to be awesome. Right. We're really excited about that, to be able to brand that fire truck for the Fairhope Pirates. And that was something, you know, the fire department presented. And, of course, my first question was, is this safety, you know, approved? Can you have a, a blue and gold fire truck? And they assured me that you could. So that's going to actually go at the airport. Oh, that's um, right. It yeah. will be um, housed at the airport. But uh, just a great addition to our fleet. I'm really excited to have that. And um, just going to be something uh, great for the Fairhope Pirates and also great for the city of Fairhope. Yep. We had a, uh, a great gift there. We got some ice cream from uh, some people in the concession stand. Wonderful. Um, we talked about the track. We've got other opportunities coming with land. We talk about uh, at our uh, the last meeting we had, we talked about the triangle and what opportunity that will have uh, for recreational, not sports, but just the opportunity to get out and walk and, and, and those type things. So the future for Fairhope uh, is going to be just great when it comes to outside uh, activities. We're going with uh, the new um, disc golf opportunities coming up over at uh, Colony Park, po Colony Park, which is on 13 and uh, Twin Beach. And that'll be a great opportunity. We have such a, a great following here in the Fairhope area of disc golf, but it, it's gotten so big that they're going to be able to use the location here on uh, this property as well as over there, and they'll be able to double almost the size of their tournaments that they're having. So that's a, that's right. a positive for uh, the city to bring in revenue for people staying in our area. Right. Really excited to be able to offer Colony Park. Right now, only nine holes are there, but we'll add the additional nine holes. And again, that property that we own right there at 32 and 13, starting a master plan for that. So I think we'll probably see a lot of multi-purpose fields and things that we're really lacking here in Fairhope, which can be used for, like you said earlier, lacrosse, football, youth football for um, soccer. So a lot of multi-purpose fields. And again, there'll be opportunity for citizen input with that master plan. So looking forward to being able to develop that recreation land there at 13 and 32 the uh the we can see the baseball fields from here the new baseball fields i see them on my way home from basketball practice and uh, i think they just finished up their season their fall season over the last couple of days uh and uh so that opportunity is, is uh great to to expand the number of fields that we have to accommodate the large large number of uh, young athletes that are playing the game of baseball. We just saw the Texas Rangers win the World Series the other day, and you know, it's it's a it's a huge part of Fairhope uh, rec sports. But it's it's a it's a staple here in Fairhope to be successful in the game and in the sport of baseball. So we're really excited about those fields and what they bring to. Uh, fair hope. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is being able to, you know, have the fields that we currently have, but add to that inventory of fields and to be able to take the current fields that we have and take those offline and rehab them because we have some new fields. So I think this year really in the budget has been a building year. We're going to look at things that we haven't done in the, you know, maintenance type items that we haven't done in the past and re really be able to build on that. So I think people will be we'll see field rehabs and we'll be able to see us taking fields offline and redoing those fields and making sure they're the best that they can be. Yeah, uh, Pat and his crew do a, a really good job making sure, I mean, this field uh, has taken a beating this year and we're hoping that, uh, you know, we can take, uh, knowing that uh, St. Michael's mm -hmm. will hopefully have their stadium finished by next year, we'll, we'll be able to take a little bit of the pressure off the field uh, and it'll, it'll look as good as it as it has and does now, but it, it is a lot with the with the situation with the water over the last couple of months. Uh, it has really taken a beating, and, and it's not as in pristine shape as it normally is. But that's uh, that's part of where we live, it and, is. And, and just you know that situation. So um, from that aspect, you know we appreciate what the the rec board employees do in trying to maintain that. I think. Last weekend, we had the big tournament, the soccer tournament at uh, the Manly Fields, and uh, I rode by there and just parking uh, all or cars all over the place as far as parking goes. So that was uh, a huge attraction for teams all over 
uh, the southeast to be able to come and participate in that tournament. Yeah, there were 109 teams out there. And so if you did go by or you were out there, you can see what a huge impact that is, not only for the Manly Soccer Complex, but also for Fairhope. We saw a lot of those kids downtown trick-or-treating, so it was great for our economy. Again, just like you mentioned, I mean, here we've had an issue because of the drought, because of lack of water. But we are hoping to add um, to the irrigation system there at Manly, add a well there to be able to irrigate when we are having drought conditions or we have issues with the water. And the same here at, um, at Valana. I mean, we want to be able to take care of our parks. And Pat and his crew do a great job in doing that. And um, just fortunate to have the recreational facilities that we have and continue to add to, to what we offer to our citizens and to the school. Yeah, it's a great time to be a uh, part of Fairhope and the city of Fairhope, and we appreciate what you do every day um, and putting out fires with our fire, our new fire yeah, truck. But it's, right. it's always an endeavor to uh, make sure that this wonderful and beautiful place is, is better the next day than it was the day before. So that's uh, kudos to you and your staff. I know they work uh, long and hard hours. Uh, so. Thank you for what you do, and uh, we appreciate uh, you coming on and talking to us. Thank you, Coach Barry. Thank you for serving on the rec board, too. We appreciate what you do. Uh, just because just I've been here the longest. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yes. Under the direction of Meredith Peterson and Tyler Butler. Color guard instructor is Philip Davis. And percussion instructor is Hallie Collins. Additional staff include Madison Harry, Kendall Calhoun, and Nicholas Herboso. The band proudly presents their 2023 program entitled Fire and Ice. Music selections include the Asire from Mozart's Requiem, the theme from The Frozen Planet 2, and Stravinsky's Firebird. Drum majors Addison Von Trova, Meredith Bates, and Gustavo Aguilera. Is your band ready? <laughs> On behalf of Principal John Cardwell, we proudly present the pride of the Eastern Shore, the Fair Hope High School Buccaneer Band!
Go fans tonight. What a great message from Briarwood Christian High School. Appreciate that. And as always, the Buccaneer Band blew our socks off. While they're clearing the way, this is one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of in our 17 or 18 or whatever years that we've been up here in the press box. We have almost half, well, we have 48, I think, total homecoming queens here tonight, representing half of Farrell High School's history, 100 years being celebrated this year. So many great people have been involved in helping us put on this celebration. We'll announce some of those people in a moment. But tonight, we literally have 48 homecoming queens, spouses, children, and as I watched them march down the track, I thought, these are some of the finest people I've ever known. I know a lot of these folks. And I thought, these are just great people. So it really does mean something. And we appreciate all of these younger and older ladies and their spouses and families being here tonight to help us celebrate. And give them time to get over the field. We take a moment to honor the memory of those who've lost along the way in 53, Lola Wilcock, 54, Gretchen Fitzgerald, 56, Jill Hall, and 58, Judy Nargang, and in, in 61, Elena McKibben, and 1970, Trish, or Tish Myrick. And there you have it, 48 homecoming queens and their families. Let's give them all an incredible hand tonight. Working from the earliest, if you will, to on the right to the most recent. You have Bishop on the right and Pioneers on the left and everybody in between. But we'd like tonight to really honor our very first homecoming queen in 1952, Mrs. Sandra Brown Bishop. This Bishop is escorted by her husband Clarence and son Ross. Go ahead and step out and make sure everybody knows who you are and where you are. Of course, if you've, been in, if you've been in Fairhope for more than six months, you know the Clarence and Sandra Bishop. Everyone loves Clarence and Sandra Bishop. And I'll expect my free set soon as next week, Clarence. In addition to this bishop, her granddaughter, Grace Bishop, was our 2017 homecoming queen, but unfortunately was unable to attend tonight in her medical studies to be a doctor soon. But what a great group of people. Let's really give this group an outstanding big round of applause and thank them all for their services mothers and grandmothers and business leaders and teachers and physicians and all the great things they've done for our community over the years. Congratulations to our homecoming queens for Fairhope High School as we celebrate our 100th year anniversary. Thank you all. And as they figure out how to leave the field and not get clobbered by our football players coming back on, We'd like to express a very special level of appreciation and gratitude to the leaders who have had the vision and determination to put on the celebration, our 100-year celebration this year. The rich history of Fairhope High School that all of us who graduated from Fairhope High School are very, very proud of, very proud to, to, to remember and to, to be a part of. Many people have contributed to this wonderful celebration that's been going on for several months, continues on for at least another weekend, and then pavers uh, being uh, placed in downtown there are all kinds of wonderful things going on. There are a few ladies who were particularly responsible. You get the chance to make a difference to, to that, not only that patient in terms of providing the care that they need, but also the family Mary helping them Louise understand Nelson, what's going on and Lynn uh, Miller, Tate, have some reassurance that the, that the patient's getting good Morgan. care. We all have something to bring to the table so thank to you take the best care of our patients that we can. It just feels like family. It feels like we're taking care of family while we're here. Fairhope, Fairhope in general is, has grown a lot, and I feel like Thomas Hospital is the cornerstone for our community. We're able, you know, to form those relationships with families and spend time with them, um, which is really special um, that I feel here. Not only does our community give to us, we give back to our community. We want to be able to provide the care that they are looking for. 
right here in Baldwin County. Well, while we have this moment, don't forget again, the city of Fairhope will honor our military veterans, talking about great people who deserve to be honored. The Veterans Day Parade is tomorrow morning. All right. Uh, Another special guest this evening, uh, Coach Gabby Gilson, uh, the girls basketball, head basketball coach for the Pirates, and also the uh, soccer, assistant soccer coach. I'm throwing right. that out there. Uh, she's a jack of all trades, and she teaches uh, health every day and does a great job with the students. They just, they, she can't get away from them. They come eat lunch <laughs> with her every day, and uh, life lessons are learned for sure in, the, in that uh, room. But we appreciate you being with us tonight. We'll just talk a little bit about the upcom upcoming season that starts Tuesday against the Biker Wolves. Uh, they're coming into the Pirate Basketball Arena. And just talk a little bit about uh, where we are with the season starting up and, and w the returning starters and, and that type stuff. Yeah, so uh, we have our first home game Tuesday night against Viger. Uh, JV boys are at uh, 4.30, varsity girls 6, and then varsity boys after. Um, we're real excited to get started. The girls have been working really, really hard um, preseason and in practice. Um, so varsity will tip it off on Tuesday, and then uh, we have a freshman team that Coach Barry here is helping out with. So uh, they'll tip it off on Thursday at Alberta, and then Saturday – um, we have our JV tournament that we're hosting all day um, at Fairhope High School. And then Friday, varsity's back in action at Baldwin County. So uh, busy first week in our program, but we're real excited. we got a great group of kids um, that, that are ready to just finally start playing and stop listening yeah, to they, you and me in practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you get to do a little bit of the game as well. So we, we got a first down at uh, about the 29. Preston took the kickoff there, got about six or eight yards. So I know you're a big sports uh, person. We talk every day about some type of sport, and you know you were able to play college uh, basketball, and uh, your family's pretty much a, a, an athletic type deal. You got Preston there with some good running room. Yep. So uh, tell us a little bit as we kind of go back and forth here. We don't want to miss any of the plays because we got people all over the country listening and watching. But uh, tell us a little bit about the returners that we have coming back with uh, the girls program and, and what you see uh, with those young ladies. Yeah, so we have uh, – we actually were very fortunate. We didn't have any seniors last season. So uh, we, we get a majority of our group back this year um, with four seniors and uh, Cooper Anderson, Murphy Creel, Ella Bird, and Peyton Frazier. Um, and then we add in some two new t new uh, newcomers that are going to help us a lot and uh, new faces. But uh, we're real excited we're, with our experience this year and hopefully um, ready to kind of pick up where we left off last season. So uh, on that play, we gained a couple of yards. Uh, we've, we've, we've used that play as kind of the stretch option play there. Uh, they, they've done a, a pretty decent job. But we talk about, uh, you know, you build off plays, and I'm sure that Coach Joel is going to have something coming here in a little bit with that Aired so out. there you go nice pass uh, i think that's uh martin with the catch over there uh those numbers are hard to see i know you got young guys but uh those yeah, black with the, with the blue uh numbers nice throw there by jackson who also plays basketball for the boys team uh he's getting better and better every week so that's the first down for the pirates on the, about the 45 but we have a you know I, i'm at practice pretty much every day that i'm able to be there we have a good good group of young we talented do. players that are going to accentuate the the returners so we're excited about that opportunity for them yeah we we have a good ki good group of kids as you pointed out with jackson playing basketball that's what's great about our kids they do a little bit of everything and and everything that they do um they match their their effort and and give their best so we're fortunate at Fairhope. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a second down and about 10 with an incomplete pass there. Uh, you know, we had Pirate Madness the other night on Halloween, which turned out to be a, a great opportunity to showcase, uh, you know, Cooper Anderson winning the three-point contest over the boys and the girls' side. 11 three-pointers And uh, so in a minute. So that was That's pretty right. exciting. Uh, so – little swing pass there or tunnel screen as they would call it uh so that opportunity for to showcase the athletes we had a dunk contest with jackson gully and uh 
Spence and uh, uh McC and Champion and McCray Tall. Uh, you know, those those guys are gonna have a, a they should have a really special year with Spence coming back off of his great year last year. Yeah. I think he's ranked in the top two or three, maybe even uh, higher than that as far as guards in the state of Alabama. Great so pass by Jackson Robertson. Yep. Um, so moving the football and, and we talked a little bit before halftime that uh, you know they're going to make adjustments in in the uh, coaching you know and coach uh, Joel does a great job of adjusting and coming out and making a, 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 a taking advantage of the things that are out there uh, nice play number eight is a uh, a tremendous player he's playing offense and defense with you know with a Christian school you you have to do those type things. Uh, but he he's made a big impact in the game tonight. He scored a touchdown earlier, but uh, you know we're we're looking to get better. And I tell the girls uh, in my situation, we're, we want to be better every day, and we want to be our best at the end of the year. And I I feel like as as the varsity goes, that'll be something that is accomplished uh, through the hard work that they're doing. But they they're getting better every day, and they're going to gel at some point. And hopefully, that's at the end of the year. When it comes to nice throw and catch yeah. there, to I believe that's Sanders. Uh, that's uh, cup. Nope, that's uh, Scott uh, uh, Harrison Cook with the catch there. So uh, young guy, a junior there, catching the ball for yeah. for that. Looks like good athlete. Yep, uh, he's he's a pitcher on the baseball team, and uh, you know once again got dual athletes that's that right. are playing. So uh, yeah, going back to what you're talking about, you just want your athletes to get one percent better every day. Same thing that. You know, we're seeing with Jackson and Coach Joel Williams with the football team. We're just trying to pluck along and get uh, everybody on the same page, get everybody better. Oh, there he is. If we time. throw it right there, nice, nice throw and catch. That's down. a great play. That's awesome. Great, great play call there with the kind of the misdirection with, yeah. with uh, great Tad. Great throw by Jackson. Yep, led him to where – we talk about leading open, mm -hmm. leading the pass to make them open. That's a great job throwing it to where nobody else catches it. So, um Really looking forward to the season. It's a long yeah. grind. We're going to Orlando to play some really good teams, we so are. that's exciting uh, for the girls to be able to do that. And uh, you know, we appreciate what you do. And I, I you know, I'm a, I'm around you every day, and and people don't understand the dedication that you have for the game of basketball. And and it's it's exciting for a mature gentleman as far <laughs> as 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 myself to to see that passion that you have. Uh, not not necessarily just for the game, but for the girls that are playing the game. And we right. we really appreciate that at Fair Hope and, and, and well, a lot I of love great. It. I love my kids. I love what I do. I love our school. So it makes it easy to do what we do uh, when we when we're surrounded by great people that support us and, and help us in every step of the way. Yep. So um, we appreciate you this year. Well, I'm Brandon. I'm excited to be out there. I know you probably see me grin all the time, but I, hey, I do love I it. do we love. We got it. a great coaching staff that does everything. They make my job easy with the kids and and helping me, guiding me with uh, Coach Barry, Coach Davidson, Coach Ag, and Coach uh, Ralph Watson this year. So. Uh, Y'all make my job easy. Y'all make me look good. Well, so. uh, you 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 work extremely hard. So we got eight minutes and seven seconds. The Pirates go up seventeen to fourteen. And we talked earlier about uh, the last one having the ball may be the winner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's exciting for fans to watch. Uh, you know, it's it's tough to watch a uh, seven to three football game like we had with uh, Mississippi State, my former yeah. uh, team, and and then Arkansas. Uh, you know, fortunately we came out on top, but. Uh, you're a big Auburn uh, fan, and and we were hoping that we didn't have the uh, three to two bowl again yeah, from years ago. But uh, it's Auburn tough this year. Yeah, so <laughs> for both of us. Yeah, but uh, I, if if you have anything else you want to speak about, we'll uh, you know talk about that. But we really appreciate you coming up and and uh, moving forward with the basketball program, and uh, you know making that uh, a success for us. And and I feel like the area is uh, for our area with the three teams is, is a pretty tough haul. And it it's is. an unfortunate circumstance because we're going to have one of the better teams that we've had over the years. Unfortunately, they brought everybody back, I believe, on both teams, and they're going to be super special. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to do a lot of strategizing to, to get an opportunity to beat those teams yeah. uh, when it comes to that. So yeah, um, it's, it's going to be a good year in the in the Baldwin County for girls basketball and boys basketball. Coach Johnson, like you said, he's got a good group. So uh, if you have a chance, come watch both teams play. They, they're they ready to go every night. So um, you can look up schedules online and, and uh, find out our games weekly and nightly. 
All right, I can't tell the number. Can you see that number, Shannon? Um, number 20, that may be Walker Rucks, number 21. Um, yeah, I think that's 21. Yeah, um, so he's not putting a lot of pressure on that uh, leg there, so we're hoping for the best with him. Marley and Alex out there helping. Uh, they do a good job. Also saw Harrison over there. He looks like he's okay, but he went to see them as well just a minute ago after that catch he made. So hopefully he's he's going to be all right. But uh, going to get after it next week. Come, uh, we'll hopefully we'll have some some games broadcast uh, mm -hmm. with Mr. Desmond. We'll get with him and see what games, and we'll have that on uh, Facebook and uh, different Instagram in, and, Instagrams. and Twitter as well. Yeah, Coach does a great job with those social media platforms to get the information out. So. Uh, you know, come support the Pirates, males and females. Come watch the girls because they are they are a really special. We got yeah. one that can shoot the lights out. Doesn't matter what part of the gym she's in, and we got some post players that can. They're ready to go this year. They're physical and they can score too now. So we can play new basketball and, and shoot the three. Yep. We can go old school too and and put in the post. So yep. we're. We're real excited with this group that we've got this yep. year and what's and to come. We we were fortunate enough to go watch the middle school last night, and there's there's a lot yes. of talent coming, and, and we want to uh, reach out to the younger kids, younger uh, females, and be able to do some camps. I think we're going to have those yes. uh, coming up. So we'll get that information out and, uh, you know, get your child involved in sports in some way and uh, keep them active and, uh, you know. Keep them in the program. Yep. Coach so. Ivy, Coach Keith, they do a great job helping us promote and build that family culture we we love at Fairhope so yeah well coaches uh, appreciate you coming up I know you had to work the gate before so yeah. uh I appreciate what you do Thank you luckily we us. don't we don't have to uh clean the stadium tonight so yeah, you get, you we get, get to, to go, go home, home. <laughs> and hopefully enjoy this win and, and head out of yep. here so. so thank you very much and I'll see you on down the road yeah thanks coach all right bye All right, I'm I'm back. All right, little out pass number eight, who who is playing both yeah, ways. He's, uh, he's 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 doing uh, what he needs to do to keep this this game uh, moving forward. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a talented young man. I haven't looked at my phone, uh, so I don't. I'm not sure if we got some stuff coming in. But uh, what a uh, what a good good night. We talk about how pretty it is. It's a football night. The wind's got a little chill in it and just, you know, you'd like to see this uh, throughout the year just because football is, you know, you'd like to have that cool snap there. So I think this is what the play they scored a touchdown on earlier with uh, number 13. Was uh, is fourth, fourth and one. Yep. So Trips. Trying to. Oh, it's a pooch kick. I got us playing up. Oh. Scare me like that, buddy. <laughs> uh, I do want to mention something. Uh, uh, everybody who's watching out tonight, uh, you know, we have the privilege of having a nice booster club here at Fairhope, Fairhope Booster Club. Uh, everything that you watch and, you know, any of these broadcasts, why you see them for free and you're not paying anything for it or and it's always free is because our booster club pays for everything that we do. So uh, during the season, they pay a fee so that right. nobody else has to. Right. Uh, so it's, uh, during the season, it's $10 a month. A little over ten dollars a month to be able to watch uh, any. You can watch any high school game, but if you just want to watch uh, Pirate Nation or the Pirates play, whatever sport that might be, uh, the Booster Club pays for that. And it's, yes. It's a, uh, you know, it's a free. And, and it's it's awesome that you know we have this many people. So, uh, you know, when you're watching, you know, you're gonna. When you're watching our games and you're watching from another school, uh, yes, we're we're a little we're a little biased, and, yeah. you know. It's it, and and you know can't help it, but you know it's our kids. Yeah. And, so and we appreciate good talent. And, yeah. Uh, you know, as long as everybody's uh, moving forward, and we're we're all about athletes. Both you and I both had the opportunity to play high school and uh, a little bit of college sports. So um, great block out there by. Oh, uh, he's still turning. As far as the way uh, Sanders blocked that, I don't know if we 
may, I don't think we have a replay, but he was uh, getting after that outside guy. Sanders is a commit to Harvard. So, uh, and, and I, I'm sure that everybody understands what that means. <laughs> that uh, means he scored a 30-something uh, on his 35. ACT. He made a 35 <laughs> on his ACT, and he's super athletic, super young man, uh, great parents. Uh, but, you know, he, he's another one of those kids that puts uh, the – the demeanor of a different person on when he steps inside whatever lines those are. Football, plays basketball as well. And uh, so he becomes, as we say in the, the business, he becomes a different animal when he gets inside those those lines. And that's exciting to see uh, at 6'4", 6'3 and a half, you know, 245 athlete that just enjoys the opportunity. Him, Barrett, uh, I, I definitely would want Barrett and uh, – Sanders on my team, uh, whatever we're playing, Sandlot or, or whatever. Oh, nice. Pitches it out. It's starting to spread it out. It's starting to open it up a little bit. Uh, do want to thank uh, all the people from Birmingham uh, that's watching tonight. Yeah, yeah. Plus, if if you were watching, you know, if you could see it across there, there's quite a few people that's actually traveled down here to uh, watch the ball game. They got a good yeah, they following. Do, they do have a good crowd. I, I mean, that was a, I noticed that earlier. You yeah. know, at halftime, I said, you know, there's a lot of people from Birmingham drove right. down here. Uh, uh, they just want to come see the city that uh, Mayor Sullivan has put together. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's great that you follow your your students, uh, your student athletes, and and support them. Uh, so kudos to to them and. Uh, Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. get, get on, on it. it. Oh, no. He called it down and he didn't have possession. That's uh, that's that's a tough deal right there. Um, Uh-oh. Going after that official doesn't need to do that. Um, yeah, that was a tough pitch there because, uh, you know, a little bit high. What did he call it, an incomplete it, pass? And I was going to say, that's that was uh, what I was thinking, is he that threw that forward, uh, which is considered an incomplete an incomplete pass. Okay, yeah. Throw it behind as a pitch, right. throw it forward. That's why and, when you – And it's considered a, a lateral backwards and just a pass forward. Uh, nice job there. Oh! That was a great tackle by number <laughs> – I think it was number 27 there. That was a uh, hit. Yeah, he, uh, he read that well. Uh, the number we were looking at earlier uh, in trying to determine Walker Rucks was one, and then uh, the other one was uh, uh, Blake Wester. He he uh, he was earlier in that shot. sequence. My shot. I, I, I've been wanting to get information to the coaches about we need to get the ball more to Sanders because he's a huge target and they if I'm not mistaken that's the fourth time he's touched the ball tonight and he's caught all four of them so uh, you know kudos to the coaches for knowing that I was thinking that because I you know I, we talk a lot and I would never uh, you know overstep my bounds of hey man we need to get that ball to him but uh, all right so we got fourth and seven we're in, uh, going to punt. Let's see if we can get it inside the 20 again. Nice. There it goes. There it goes. Great Keep rolling. Job. Inside the 10. So uh, Nice. Nice job. My mind went blank. Uh, Norris. No, no, that's not right. Uh, 55 is Clayton Novel. My mind went blank. Clayton uh, is the long snapper, and mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he will have a chance at the next level because he is a special. Uh, you know those those things. You know, you just have kind of have a knack to be able to throw yeah. that uh, the the ball between your legs like that. But he'll have a chance to do that at the next level, uh, as well as playing uh, an offensive line position. But he he will get recruited and possibly get a scholarship down the road. Uh, for being a long snapper. So that is, that's a specialty him. that, yeah. you know, not not a lot of people know uh, can do that job. Yeah. Um, so that's that's exciting for him. Uh, we got a uh, shout-out to uh, Bubba Strong, number 62, senior night, proud of, proud of uh, our O-liner from uh, Clinton, Mich 
uh, Missouri, sorry. Um, so we've had Missouri, Colorado Springs, uh, Florida, Florida, uh, Birmingham. We we we've had them all as far as California, Hawaii, right. we, uh, overseas. I remember a couple one, of years one ago. One year they were in India or uh, <laughs> they were somewhere over there. So right. so we everything then, gets around. Yeah. And we and we appreciate everybody for watching. Nice job of him and him up. Uh, in that, so that'll be that'll be third down and about ten. Uh, uh, just got a Luke Reynolds, the junior running back, broke. Uh, let's see what number Luke is. Oh, number eight. Imagine that. <laughs> so, um, well, it, says, it has him listed as a linebacker, but uh, we jumped. Or quarterback. Well, there's two two eights, so one plays linebacker, one plays quarterback. Uh, but Luke broke the single game rushing record last weekend with 221 yards on the ground. He even had a 90 yard TD run called back. Holy wow! Hell. The record was previously held by former NFL running back Tim Castile. I, did he play? Uh, I think he may have played somewhere where I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Congratulations to Luke. He's, uh, I think that was him that just ran the ball just a second ago. But he's got quick feet. I don't know if he plays other sports. Uh, I think he may be the shortstop we were talking about. No, that was seven. Seven. So, yeah, there's there's number seven with, uh, oh, nice defensive play by, uh, sorry, guys. It is so difficult to see those uh, numbers from where we are Uh that's uh, I think that's uh, Desmond Thomas. Now that I, everything's kind of slowed down. Uh, he was a running back at the beginning of the year with some injuries. We had to move him to defensive back, and he's done a great job. You know, to go to cornerback and never really play cornerback is a difficult task, and that just shows how dedicated he is for one and how athletic he is uh, in that situation. So. Um, yeah, I experienced that one time. <laughs> I, oh, 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 look here. Touchdown. We got, did we get it? Yeah. That's a touchdown. That's uh, looks like DJ, uh, TJ maybe. I can't – you know I can't see them numbers. I'm pretty sure. Well, wherever he is, he's running around. Yeah, that's 40. That's uh, – <laughs> That's 40. That's a defensive lineman, Patrick Harbin or PJ. Uh, that's – that. He's a junior. Uh in my class, just yes, sir, no, sir, always uh, Good fun kid. to be around uh, in those situations. But uh, wow, what a, what a change of events! I Fisher Southall is uh, the one that caught the touchdown a while ago, uh, from what I've been told, on the back of the end zone when Coach Gilson was with us. So um, good, good job, Fisher. Uh, I believe he's a young young player. If I don't, if I don't think. I think he rode my bus, and then uh, I got moved out of that area. But uh, Campbell coming through again. Uh, the Pirates go up 24 to 14 with a minute 35 to go in the third quarter. Uh, you know, you always you always hate when that type thing happens for any team. But uh, you know, we we gave up an interception earlier in that same situation. They got a score out of it, so we're going to be happy that I, our our uh, opportunity came I, at that point. I thought he was going to fall on it for a safety, but yeah. it looked like it squirmed out from yeah. under him, yeah. and we just we were just at the opportune time yeah. to be there. So. Uh, which is great for us. So, all right, we need to talk about a couple of sponsors. Yeah, me and you have been yakking all yeah, night. Uh, <laughs> More you than me, but because you've been double doing double duty interviews and everything. But uh, you know, one of our big big sponsors is you know El Mexicano uh, here, and everybody can go up there and watch the game. They always show the game on their big screen up there, um, and. We just, I mean, we they've been a big sponsor of us for years, so we do really appreciate that. Also, uh, Bayside Orthopedic, which has actually changed names, if I'm not mistaken. I think they were. Uh, not uh, sure about that. Also, Hunter Security, one of our one of our biggest sponsors, and oh, our. Oh, nice job! Fumble, fumble! We get it. No, I did think we, we got it back. Did they get we it back? 
They got it back. Yep. Great job by number 19 there, jumping on the ball uh, in that situation. Coverage is awesome tonight. Uh, yeah, Hunter Security, I'm uh, going to tell on Scott, uh, a former player of mine back in the late 80s. I was very young when I first started. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Scott's been a, a super supportive uh, company uh, for Fairhope for many, many years, so we appreciate. Well, uh, he, he was our first sponsor for Pirate Nation Live. Yeah. Sure was. He's uh, been here. Uh, how long have we been doing this, Desmond? Ten, over 10 years, haven't we? Yeah, yep. 10 year anniversary. So uh, thanks to, to the Hunter family and what they do for us. Oh, that's a good defensive play. Nice job, PJ. Good job. That's that's number 40 again, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, yes, this is actually our 10 year anniversary. I knew it had to be around 10 years uh, when we first started this. Uh, me and uh, Tommy Faust and Desmond and. Uh, uh, quite a few others uh, started as I remember a lot of times we got booted out of our own booth or we had to call it in the stands. Uh, me and you called a game in Foley in the stands. Remember yep. when we had uh, boy, boy kicked the field goal and we beat Foley uh, at, as time expired? Yep. That's the best game ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we've had a lot of a uh, lot of games we've been calling over the years, and uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed having, you know, 10 years, in which, like I said, Hunter Security has been with us for 10 years. And I know that for a fact. And then now also we got uh, Thomas uh, Roofing, too. And uh, Thomas Roofing has been with us quite a while. So all your roofing needs, whether it's uh, commercial or residential, Thomas Roofing will take care of that. And they've been in business since 1968. So uh, Almost as old as I am. Almost. <laughs> all right, so you got uh, third down and about nine. Uh, looks like the clock. Well, they're going to get one more play in the, in the half. Oh, he's wide open. If he, he didn't. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh no, 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 no. He must have hit him right out of bounds. That's out a of tough tackle. call. Tough call. Man, he took a big hit. Yeah, that was he got a, right on up, too. That was uh, the quarterback. A, yep, that's impressive uh, on both ends to maintain. So, it looks like the clock, at, well, 1.7 to go in the third. So, while they're doing this, go ahead and yeah, make I'll, it. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, uh, – I'm not going to argue from here, um, <laughs> whatever. But, it was uh, close. It, yes, sir. Well, 1.7 seconds left in the in the third in the third quarter. So let's run this last play to start the end of the third quarter here. A little pitch to the right, and he got out of bounds. Yeah. As Number time expires. He's a tough, tough runner. All we'll right, we're going. That's the end of the third quarter, so we're going to go to a quick commercial. Then we've got announcement. You get the chance to make a difference uh, to that. Not only to that patient in terms of providing them the care that they need, but also the family, helping them understand what's going on and um, have some reassurance that the, that the patient's getting good care. We all have something good to bring to the table to take the best care of our patients that we can. It just feels like family. It feels like we're taking care of family while we're here. Fairhope in general is has grown a lot and I feel like Thomas Hospital is the cornerstone for our community. We're able, you know, to form those relationships with families and spend time with them, um, which is really special um, that I feel here. Not only does our community give to us, we give back to our community. We want to be able to provide the care that they are looking for right here in Baldwin County. You can't schedule an illness or injury. That's why Alpha Care Urgent Care is open late every day. The care you need when you need it. Locations in Spanish Ford and Fairhope. Alpha Care Urgent Care, changing the way health care is delivered on the coast. All right, you pirates, load the cannons and ready the blades. There be trespassers in our waters, and it's time. It's up 24 to 14. 12, 12 minutes. Got uh, second and four. He's bouncing out to the outside. Of that. Good, Good job coming up by Desmond again. Uh, real quick, I want to uh, Veterans Day activities coming up. 
the city of Fair Oak will honor its military veterans in a Veterans Day parade on Saturday, November the 4th, which is tomorrow. The parade will start at 10 o'clock and will begin and end at the Fair Oak Civic Center. Participants include local veterans organizations, military vehicles, local scout troops, and many other local groups. Leading the parade will be Fair Oak's 2023 Veteran of the Year, Edward Juju Lassard, Jr. A light breakfast will be held before the parade beginning at 8.30 in the Civic Center lobby. Intercepted, intercepted. That's Dixon. I mean, he, he looked like he threw it right to him. You got a replay? All right. Missed it. Dixon, yeah. But he, he, was, he was in the right place at the right time. He threw it across the middle. I know they're going to have to start trying to make a few extra plays, you know. He's probably yeah. maybe threw a pass. It was ill-advised, but uh, we're in the right place. Uh, we're in their territory, so let's see if we can go down and get another well, I, score. I would guess, and obviously I haven't watched any film, but it looks like they lean heavy on the run. And being down 10 in the fourth quarter, they're having to do something. They're not – not to say that they can't pass the ball, but they uh, – Oh, oh, get out of that. That a boy. Uh, well, since uh, the quarterback ran for, what, 220-something yards last week? Yeah. <laughs> or, oh, yeah, I think it was last week. But he's the tailback. So, the tailback. Uh, they lean towards that offensive line and – and, uh, you know, they're probably well, he, to being it, a little bit uh, maybe ahead or whatever in that situation. And he's got a good arm back there. I mean, he his balls are very crisp. You know, yeah. he's throwing oh, yeah. a good ball. Uh, it was just right across the middle, and we had two two guys standing right there on it. Yes. Crisp. Oh. That was uh, ill-advised. All right, so celebration will continue on Saturday, November the, November the 11th at 445 in the Henry G. Park. I'm sorry, Henry George Park. A sunset prayer service will be held at the Veterans Memorial. Tears of sorrow, tears of joy. Pastor Mike Megason of, uh, with Three Circle Church will lead the prayer service, and taps will be performed following the prayer. For more information, if you're uh, on the parade or the sunset prayer service, Call Kim Ryland at 251-929-1447. So that's 251-929-1447. So that's uh, tomorrow's events and next Saturday, November the 11th, for the sunset. So we appreciate the city putting on things like that because we love our veterans. Yes, we do. Uh, that was a miscommunication on that pass, uh, Jackson through one way and the receiver went the other way. So now we're looking at fourth down. Uh, it's a good time to see if he can put one inside the 10. Uh, agreed. Good snap. Oh, Ooh. oh, uh oh. Hit somebody. Right. Touch it, touch it. I think he was, uh, he was thinking the same thing we were and trying to put a little soft touch on it and yeah, uh, went straight up. I'm not sure. I don't know if you saw. I'm pretty sure that's Barrett with the football, but I don't know if you noticed. But he he caught it and <laughs> dove forward to try to get that extra yard. <laughs> uh, and then I saw the coach on the other side. He's like, No, no, it's right here. It's right here. So uh, you know, Barrett's he's kind of a sneaky one. But uh, you know, that's that's gamesmanship and you know trying to make uh, the opportunity and you know. You never know in those situations. Uh, and one yard, like you get points out of it, but you no. might get a yard or two. So, That's right. Uh, the uh, I got uh, Campbell Mc Campbell McKellar uh, from Jim and Marilyn Woodard watching from Crystal Springs, and I think we've had uh, we've talked to them. Uh, before and uh, congratulations to Campbell and we're hoping that Campbell gets an opportunity at the next level uh, if that's what he chooses because he's a talented young man uh, up that way and uh, tell tell uh, my friend Dr. Stan hello if you see him running around over there in Christmas Springs. Oh, oh, you got to hold on to him. He <laughs> went for it and, and missed. It. Uh, and it, I, I was correct. Uh, well, we were corrected. Uh, number eight, Luke Reynolds. Yes. He does play both ways. Yes. I know you had two number eights on yeah. there, but he does play linebacker. I could tell with the athletic ability and uh, the knee brace. 
or yeah. the knee sleeve, I should say. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a great throw and catch. And our defensive back, I think that was Amir, he went with his uh, – he tried to knock it down with his right hand. And if he had gone with his left hand and still been able to grab a hold, uh, they wouldn't have had that big of a, a play there. So um, they're just running some quick outs there to try to, you know, force that defensive back to come up. And I'm sure here in just a second they're going to try to uh, maybe go over the top in that situation. So um, – Nine minutes counting down uh, from there. Uh, Pirates up 24 to 14. Uh, you know, bend and don't break kind of deal uh, here for the defense. Uh oh. Oh, quarterback kept. Oh. Nice job. Uh, he waited to the last minute to pull that ball. Yeah. Uh, so the Landry's watching from Louisiana. So we put a note. We need to have us a, uh, a map, a map up here and put pins <laughs> uh, where everybody's talking from. So um, uh, Lawson, Landry, number sixty-nine, and Abby uh, is in the band. They're both in my class, and just a lot of fun to have uh, in 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 the class as twins. They're they're really cool and kind of vibe off each other. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, the Pirates kind of have number eight's number tonight. Uh, he's gotten loose a couple of times, but I'm sure we watch some film and know what a great athlete he is, and they're keying on him. Uh, so, you know, they've got, you know, they're they're in the playoffs, and uh, obviously you want to win every time you play. Uh, but you know, they got bigger fish to fry over the next couple of weeks, and unfortunately, the Pirates, you know, we're we're playing far tonight as senior night and, and those type things. So. Ooh. So that's incomplete pass. Nice job coming up there by Dixon. Uh, Dixon was one of the speakers today at the senior pep rally. And uh, his his brother, who played last year, is a freshman at Delta State in Mississippi. And he's in the uh, air, uh, let's see, well, I, I guess, uh, flying school up there so he will be a pilot or may already be a pilot he, he and ryan mcneil are up there together in that situation uh trying to learn how to fly and they're going to be pilots uh down the road so it's uh first down and 10 for the pirates at the 36 yard line and uh so we'll try to run some of this clock nice cut back by hold on to the football nice job by preston getting about six uh in that situation uh, uh -oh, we got one down. Number, number uh, looks like number 62. Uh, All right. Is this our center? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's uh, Stephen. <laughs> Where everything's okay with him. He's he's walking on a little bit, a yeah. little gingerly. It could be an ankle. All right, we got second and around four. Yeah. That was our center. He's got a new one in there. Yeah, he oh, get there. All right, so that's going to put us at third and First one with uh, seven minutes to go uh, in the fourth quarter. Um, <laughs> uh, one of our former teammates for Pirate Nation Live, Mr. Brunson, uh, 
just a crackerjack when it comes to electronics and just a superhuman being. Our audio uh, engineer yes. for years. Uh, he reminded us of the Foley game and how it was John Baxter. I was trying to think of who that was. It was John uh, Baxter. And uh, one of the he says one of the greatest moments in Pirate Nation Live history. We used to go, we used to have to get, uh, have great time broadcasting from the stands with the fans all around us. So nice, uh, nice job first there. Down. Uh, first down. And, and uh, Richard, I don't know if you remember this. I know you're watching. That uh, you called me and we couldn't get in the booth. And you said, where is there a place we can plug in? And I said, you know, there's a ticket booth. I said, I bet there's a plug in. And for some reason, you had a 200 to 300 <laughs> foot extension cord wrapped around the back of the stadium to get us up and working. And we do appreciate that. Yeah. That was some great times. All right. So we got a little under six minutes. First down. Handing it to Preston, kind of leaning on Preston and his uh, opportunity there to maintain uh, possession of the ball. Um, with about six, with five minutes and about 30 seconds yeah. left, we're just going to try to grind it out. Yeah, we need, uh, a, we need about five first downs. Is, uh, <laughs> that'll work, we, wouldn't it? Yeah, if we can, we can about a minute uh, of first down would be uh, would be awesome. But uh, once again, we appreciate everybody listening. Uh, and, and uh, supporting your team. And, uh, you know, we, we're excited about having the opportunity to hand. Oh, nice read by uh, – hold on. Ooh. I thought Preston thought he was supposed to get it. He stopped. Yeah. He thought it may have been a fumble. Uh, great sportsmanship. I hadn't seen any uh, real uh, testy uh, – hand fighting or anything like that so uh both both sides are being uh sportsmanship responsible tonight with uh you know making sure that they don't put themselves in in a bad situation uh, we got a little movement there uh give a little shout out to my ex-neighbor brian wright he's watching from home tonight and uh we do appreciate you watching and we can't go backwards fellas all right so it's third down and uh be about third and 11. Uh, Brian Richardson, former player, um, checking in. Go Pirates was there to watch the future Pirate cheerleader. His daughter one of those little ones. So, uh, Brian, he could catch it. Now, he he, uh, he loved the game, went on to play at the next level at Mississippi College, and uh, just, you know, one of those guys you want on your team. So, uh, Brian, it's always good to hear from you, and I hope things are going well. For you and your family. Hey, moved again. Preston's trying to tell him something's going on up there. I hate the way we need to be moving. I thought we needed some first yeah, downs. Yeah, we needed first downs. Uh, clock's at 4:17. So, the uh, third and about 16 now. Uh, it's looking at uh, number zero there. His name's Luke Dickerson, Dickinson, excuse me. He, uh, he and Preston were uh, talking, and uh, it's always good to, to be able to talk to the opponent and have – I'm sure Preston was making him laugh because that's what he does. And, uh I think we're going to go ahead and punt and give it back to him there. So, Zero just <coughs> he's, he's uh, a quick young man uh, in that situation. We had a timeout uh, coming up with uh, three minutes, 44 seconds. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we got uh, – it's a timeout, so if you want to go to uh, – Probably about 30, 45, 45 seconds. seconds. Yeah. All right, hang on just a second. Go to the commercial. You can't schedule an illness or injury. That's why Alpha Care Urgent Care is open late every day. The care you need when you need it. Locations in Spanish Ford and Fairhope. Alpha Care Urgent Care, changing the way health care is delivered on the coast. All right. So fourth down. Oh, Lord. They were coming. They were coming. Oh, what a punt. Oh, my goodness. What a punt. Stay. Stay. Oh, my gosh. Kick. 
What a job. Wow. What a job. That was a great punt. Luke would be proud. He hit me up last time we were uh, – I was on the air, and uh, he said, what a bomb. I believe it's what he uh, – I think it was what a bomb, but that was that was the best punt of the night. My goodness! With pressure in his face, turned it over. When he didn't have anybody, then you know he's yeah. trying oh, to yeah. he was trying to finesse it. That one, he just let it rip. Some of our uh, uh, some of the guys that play soccer, I coach soccer as well, or help with the soccer program, uh, ordering stuff, and I call myself the chief operating officer because all I all I try to do is order cloth and make sure the bus gets there. But uh, there goes number eight again, trying to get to the corner. Kept him in bounds. Um, he's a workhorse for sure. Uh, hopefully he'll have an opportunity if he loves the game and moves forward. He'll he'll uh, make somebody happy at the next level. But he is wanting to. I'd like to see what will happen next week, you know. Yeah. I, uh, First round uh, of the playoffs. Yep. Uh, I'm I think not sure. Pl- be, if anybody knows out there, Texas real quick to who they play. That they're playing Carver and Montgomery. Oh, that's right. They said Car- that earlier. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Carver and Montgomery. So that's going to be a little tough task, but uh, you know, Briarwood has been a been a real good school up in Birmingham for yep. a for like a private school, uh, right outside of uh, Pelham. Right. Uh, it's on a little back road between Pelham and uh, I think uh, 280. Uh, I lived up there for about a year, and I'd always pass Briarwood on the way to yep. my apartment. So. so good luck to Harper, Chance, and Darwin. They're playing in a soccer tournament in Panama City tomorrow. So appreciate y'all giving up your time to. Uh, watch the Pirates uh, <coughs> while we're here. So, um, oh, oh, a little bit behind yep. him. Yep, that ball may have been tipped the way it kind of went back because uh, in that situation. But uh, got a shout out to Clayton Noblet. We talked about him earlier um, from his uh, Jack and Anna Claire Flowers. Uh, hey. Camera, Jack is a former pirate. Uh, well, both of them. Oh, are. there's a pooch kick. Uh, just let it roll. Let it roll. Just let it roll. Uh, so we got two minutes and 37 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, Jack and Anna Claire, two of my favorites. Uh, super athletes when they were here. Um, but uh, good to hear from you guys. I hope everything's going well. And uh, Clayton's done a wonderful job, as you said, and uh, looking forward to watching him at the next level. Now, when now, the now let's comes. just clear this up. So every time you say some of your former students, tell everybody how long you've been teaching here, Scott. Uh, this is my 34th. I, well, <laughs> on my on my uh, RSA thing, it says 3402. Okay. So I've been teaching since 1988. Several of the uh, homecoming queens, uh, I had, even back to 18, uh, not, not 18, <laughs> 1989, uh, I was a uh, teacher when they were in high school. So, so now do you, uh, do you have any kids out here playing that you taught their parents? Oh, there's been several. <laughs> uh, there's been some that have graduated and have their own kids, but uh, they asked me, are you going to stay long enough to teach my – I was like, no, I, I don't think I'm going to be there for your grandchild, but who knows? So, Because the people who don't know it are listening that don't know you, when you keep saying former students and everybody goes like, well, how long ago did they play? Well, since you've been here since 1988. Yeah. So it's been a long time. Yeah. So two minutes left, uh, second down and 10 for the Pirates. Uh, we just want that clock to keep running. And we want, if we can get two more first downs. Stay in bounds. Yep. Good job. Continuing to run. Uh, they, Briarwood is very good at, at maintaining the uh, outside edge. Uh, they, they're con- they they're containment. Well. They, they sh- they're, looks they're, like they they're string it out. You to hit that yep. corner. Uh, I don't know that we've hit the corner, but maybe twice. <laughs> um, but uh, Jackson's done a good job managing the game. Uh, a couple of really good first down throws, or to get first down. Uh, opportunities with some throws and some good catches from uh, the receivers tonight. Um, but you got a minute 37, Pirates up 24 to 14. Um, and this is, you know, we talked earlier in, in the opportunity here that we wanted a, a competitive game. Uh, and, and we've had that. Briarwood, uh, they're, 
they, they should have a really legitimate chance uh, next week against the team from Montgomery. But, uh, you know, hopefully none of their guys, you know, there's some, some circumstances over there. Just hope it's bruises or, you know, just some nicks and, and bangs or whatever. Nothing serious for them to deal with over this next week before they get ready to get into that playoff uh, opportunity. So. And, and I have, you know, I know they traveled here, you know, uh, four hours to get here. I know it's a long drive and uh, they're going to have, a, you know, another drive about two and a half hours because they're, they're having to go play in. Uh, Montgomery next yeah. week, probably at the Crampton Bowl, right. which is a great place to play. They yeah. they got a a nice field. Uh, I think that, uh, mostly it was funded by the uh, the Choctaw Indians up there. Right. The Porch Creek. I'm sorry, Porch Creek Indians, and a uh, uh, real nice facility they've got up there. So uh, look forward to looking at some of the scores next week in the playoffs. Ooh. All right. So uh, Jason Petrus. Uh, Another one of my former students. He's number 19. He's a senior. Uh, shout out from uh, – no, I'm sorry, Tucker. I'm sorry, Jason is the one that's uh, sending the shout out. But he's in Louisiana this evening. So, shout out to, to Tucker, uh, who's a senior, number 19, uh, also a uh, super young man, works extremely hard. He's on the track team and, and uh, is, has a chance to do some really good things this year in the uh, – in the track world uh did has from what i talking to coach watkins and uh coach rogers he has made a probably one of the bigger jumps in understanding his uh field event and getting better every time so he he will have a chance to compete at the the state level and do some good things so real excited for for him so so we got 49 seconds, uh, the fourth down and 10. So hopefully we can get one more good punt out of Nolan uh, and then defensively play uh, the way we've been playing all night and get that opportunity to uh, get this evening senior night opportunity taken care of. So they're going to – good job. He got that one out of there. They were all coming. There's nobody yeah, they, back there. Right. They, uh, they had 11. Uh, stay in, stay in the, oh, inside the 20 again. I think every punt except, except the for one, one. <laughs> has been inside the 20. And uh, that's a great night for a punter. Uh, and then he'll turn around and play defense here and, and uh, hopefully have a uh, say so in that uh, opportunity. So 39 seconds. Uh, I'm sure Briarwood will, will do whatever they can to uh, – to get the ball down the field and, and, and get some points on the board. Uh, we wish them, you know, success next week. Uh, and gotten some several several shout-outs on both sides of the spectrum. <laughs> uh, some good, some bad. Yep. But, uh, you know, we, we try to do – oh, nice throw and catch there with a uh, – Just hold on to him. Yep. Uh, with, we uh, we got to find in the middle of the field there. Thirty seconds. We got a couple of kids that's probably getting to, getting to play a little bit, getting a little excited. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Coach Carter's not not uh, moving people around at this time of the game. So you got too high defense, just allowing them to. Uh oh. Uh, he's got to run that one. Yep. He is a quick job. There's no doubt in my mind he plays uh, another sport with those <laughs> feet. Uh, I would I would guess that he may even play basketball, but he is built like a second baseman or a shortstop. He is. Maybe a center fielder, but I bet he runs a quick time to first base. You, usually when you're playing in like a little private school, I say little or 6A, yep. uh, you, know, you play multiple sports. Uh, I did get a – let's see, so it's second – no, first down – Throw and catch there. Hey, nice job. One. He does a really good job of finding, buying time to be able to get to that open area and just and the receivers do a good job of following him. You know they're tracking him because they're out of their because when he leaves the pocket they're they're basically feeding off of him as to what they need to do to to, to get open. So I, good I job throwing and catching there for those guys. You got 4.5 seconds uh, left to go. And I think they're just working on stuff. You know they're working a little two-minute offense because right. you know next week is is a, is a tough task. You know, yeah. they're, they're, I mean, they're going to see a different level of athlete um, with that group that they're going to play. But 
with the, uh, with their size, and if they can get that run game going, I feel like they'll have a, a pretty good opportunity for them because, uh, you know, the uh, that quarterback he's he's pretty good. And you get number eight uh, rolling with those big offensive linemen, they uh, they they'll have an opportunity. Uh, and I, what I was going to say is, I got a uh, text while ago that they were they're a six A, I believe. I'm not 100 percent on that, but they're yes. looking to maybe get back to four A. Yeah, uh, five, four or five A. Yeah, so they yeah. they're wanting to drop a classification, uh, so that. Uh, he is so oh, here we go. elusive. That is ball game. So number 71, he got a pancake on the last last play. And when you watch it on film, uh, our guy was just tired and he just he just stayed there. And uh, but a great game, uh, 24 to 14. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad we ended on a high note. Right. You know, yeah, that's our third uh, win of the season, and and it's like I said earlier, we've been in several games. I think we've lost three games uh, by a total of uh, 18 points, maybe, and you know, two of those uh, were within uh, you know a couple a couple plays towards the end of the game. Uh, I talked to Coach Carter yes or today actually, and or yesterday, and uh, you know, he's he's very. Uh, excited about what happened with this group of seniors and how much uh you know they dedicated themselves to being part of this and you know it's tough you, you only win three games as as, as a football player and, and you, but you, but uh, you but played hard they played yeah. hard all year every every game if i wasn't here i was watching and you could always tell that they always right. played hard they, so uh, and we've talked about that throughout the years is you know the 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 spirit here uh pirate nation uh is is always continue to work hard and and that goes throughout all of our sports and uh the it goes from the top down with mr cardwell and and the uh, administration and how much they love these kids and the opportunity to uh be successful in whatever that is you know we got one of the best academic schools uh in the state of alabama when it comes to a public school setting uh so you know we're really excited about where Oaks headed academically athletically and uh you know it's great to be a pirate well, I, you know, like I said, Scott, uh, shout out to Briarwood for coming down here. And, you know, next week we wish them the best. Uh, looks like a great school. And uh, our Pirates, we, we do appreciate all the hard work they put in. And this season, I want to thank, you know, uh, Desmond and, and, the, and the kids that, that run the cameras every week and, and all our commentators because we've had a mixed bag this year. Right. Uh, just everybody stepped in. And it's been great. I mean, I've I've enjoyed coming back. I'm you know I missed a few years, but I've been back a couple of years, and I've thoroughly enjoyed. It. I love working with you. Me and you have a good time. Yeah, when we're we, up here. We kind of and uh, flow off each other. I do so, have uh, one more shout out. A uh, friend of mine, uh, Mark Brown, is asking to shout out to uh, homecoming queen Carla Davis in 1968, and. Uh, we're, they're watching from Boone, North Carolina. So there's another check mark, check for, mark. Uh, <laughs> for another state. So, uh, Mark, it's good to hear from you. And uh, n- another shout out from uh, one of the Briarwood Christian. Uh, you know, thanks for being so gracious tonight. So, you know, they they played well. Good luck to them next week. Yep. And uh, you know, we hope to read about them on Saturday morning. Uh, uh, Shay Shay sent us a. Uh, a shout out too. We could just probably keep going to all these people's <laughs> centers, but it's great to be a pirate, and uh, we appreciate uh, you guys listening and, uh, and we'll catch us in basketball season or baseball, softball. Right. We'll be broadcasting yep. all everything, so we'll put it on our social media. So yep. again, thank you again for watching, and uh, y'all have a good night and go, go pirates. pirates. So congratulations. <laughs>